Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, March 16th, 2023. Let's get into it. Hey, I always try to talk about stuff to help you out and a little story for you. Uh, one of the things that you need to do while you're driving is always keep an eye out behind you, in front of you, and beside you. And I know, you know, it's it, sometimes we just are zoning out and just cruising down the highway, but you know, you got to keep looking about every minute or so and just kind of checking around. And if you're not in a hurry to get somewhere, take your time. And the reason for this story was, <laughs> once again, I had a near-death experience on the way here just to go hiking. I, I you know, one of these days I got to make a, a death video, you know, let's see, cancer twice, uh, a severely broken neck, uh, 28 car accidents and today well this, this is the first time I've, I've narrowly avoided a collision here in, in uh, central Florida people here don't well I guess a lot of them are old but some of them are just rednecks and they don't uh, anyway I'll get let me just give you the quick story so luckily I was taking my time I was admiring the new we just repaved the road and I was admiring the road and so really I was only doing about 45 and a 55 Nobody behind me. You can't do that if somebody's behind you. I always try to do five over the speed limit when somebody comes up behind me. And that's just so that I don't get any road rage. And I'm to give you that advice too. If uh, somebody's coming up behind you and they're in a hurry and you can't get out of their way, make sure you're just doing five over the speed limit. Not, now, if they get road rage at that point, what are you going to do? You know, I mean, that's you, 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 you're, you're breaking the law as it is, five over the speed limit. And uh, if they want to get road rage, well, so be it. Because I do get that sometimes. I'll be five over, and then all of a sudden they'll come out over the double yellow line, pass right around me. Happens quite often here in Central Florida. And I just say, good riddance, go on. Anyway, let's get to the story. So I'm coming in, and there's some line crews working on the right-hand side of the road on the shoulder there. If you could call it a shoulder, it's just a kind of a grassy area. And the guys are up on the, the you know, the ladders. You know, working on the lines and vehicles partially out into the my lane of the road so you got to kind of swerve a little bit to the left you know it's just a two-lane highway and uh and there's a piece of farm equipment coming down uh right there right across from the um the line crews and uh he's you know of course he's going slow as farm equipment does and uh and i'm watching this and this car right with the line crews right there pulls out and passes the piece of farm equipment. I'm I'm doing 45 miles an hour now. You ever have that deer in the headlights moment <laughs> where you're looking at it going, is this really happening? No way. I mean, I'm heading at this guy head on collision. If I had been doing the normal 60 miles an hour, we would have smacked. That would have been a 120 mile an hour collision. Uh, and well, he was probably going faster than 60 because he was passing the farm piece of equipment. So we're, we're looking at 130 mile an hour. And, or I could have, the only, the only thing I could have done was bailed into the uh, line crews and slammed into them and killed them. I, my choice would have been to hit him head on, you know, but uh, anyway, luckily I was able to just slam on my brakes and swerve even then i still almost hit the, the 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 line crew equipment now i was behind it so you know if i had been up close to them i wouldn't even been able to do that and then the guy just took off and you know kept on going so what's the moral of the story well the moral of the story is is i encourage construction crews everywhere in the united states to have cameras set up to film something like that so that they can turn these idiots in that risk their lives, okay? So if you're on a, a line crew or you're on a construction crew, talk to your management, man, and tell them, we want cameras, you know, set up around us so that we can film the cars going by. If we get somebody stupid, you know, hopefully we can get that license plate and turn them dumb sons of guns in. Anyway, so that's... Uh, that was my dream anyway that, that's the point of the story second thing is i always hit things that uh, i think are important or possibly important to you uh you know i had i've been talking about my garden talk about the garden garden grow garden grow garden anyway so uh i'm getting my massage now i'm not rich i just have to do it because my back 
after my broken neck uh, the muscles not up back there and yeah it's a hell of an expense for me uh, I'm not rich but uh, but it's it I tell you it gives me a almost about a week or two of relief every time I get a massage and I can only afford it once a month anyway just getting that out of the way because you're saying oh my god he's paying for a massage you know um, so yeah and by the way if you if you do have uh, knotted muscles in your back or or you're just uh, getting all tensed up, I tell you, it's, massage therapy is very important to you. I, I never was a believer in it. I just thought I'd try it because I couldn't, nothing else was working, you know, as far as stretchy, you know, because I've got stretches I got to do for my neck since I broke it. You know, you take a pillowcase and you pull your head this way and pull your head that way. Anyway, what's going to help you out? was uh, I told you my peppers are doing really, really well in the garden. And uh, I have way, way, way too many of them. So what am I supposed to do with all of these peppers? Well, uh, dumbass, I am a dumber than dumb. Dumber than a dumb rock. You can freeze peppers. <laughs> and it was my massage therapist that told me you can freeze the peppers. And I thought, wow, that's freaking great. And so I watched a video on it last night. You can just put them in a Ziploc bag, but I've got one of those vacuum sealers and uh, you can keep them peppers up with a vacuum seal for about a year, year and a half. If you just put them in a Ziploc bag, you can keep them for about a year. So I've been throwing peppers out. Now, yeah, I could have given them, I've tried to give them away. You know, I've had, I have my yard crew. I said, you guys take some peppers. No, oh, man, we, we don't really eat them. Mexicans now, <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to stereotype, but I would have thought they would want the peppers, you know. Uh, they didn't take any. I was surprised by that. Uh, and then I've done, uh, so you can freeze the peppers. The other thing was I tried uh, a new weed killer, and I didn't want to talk about it uh, per se on the videos until now. What you get, here's the mix. You buy the uh, industrial strength uh, vinegar from Amazon. That's the only place I know to get it. It's 45% uh, vinegar. Now that compare that to all, over the counter brand, which is just 5%. Mix that, well, one gallon of, of uh, vinegar. Now it, with the 45%, I cut it in half because that's it's expensive. <laughs> you know, so I figure 20, 22% vinegar is probably adequate. And, uh, and so I cut it in half and put, add a half a gallon of water, half a gallon of vinegar, mix in one cup of salt, Okay, of course, stir it up, make sure the salt dissolves into the, uh, to the solution. Add some Dawn dishwashing liquid, probably about a tablespoon or two, or I just put a squirt down in there. And then, uh, and then mix it all together. And you better buy, I'm, I'm gonna show you. Uh, well, let's cut to that now. So you know, this is what you want. <clears throat> this is your weed killer. 45% vinegar, cut that in half, or maybe even a quarter, I'm sure it would be just fine. It is expensive, more you can order that at Amazon. <clears throat> I don't know where else you can find it. And then you want this professional sprayer. And get the bigger size, they sell a smaller size. But I tell you, you're gonna go through it, man. Get the bigger size. Now, if you got a big area, you can get one of them big pump sprayers, but I think that these are adequate. You can buy four bottles, so it wasn't that damn expensive. Look at this. I applied it right here. Yesterday. All dead. Right over here. There were some weeds dead. Dead and dead in one day, baby. Who needs Roundup, huh? Okay, so that's what the uh, the vinegar is in, in the spray bottle. And so, you know, and then with that spray bottle, by the, by the way, you can buy one of those big uh, you know, spray, spray containers where you pump it, you know. I mean, if you got a big area to cover, by all means do it. But uh, I just have a little little weeds in the garden and that's all that I do. So, uh, and, but it worked. Well, I, as I showed you, it, it worked uh, it, and it didn't stain. The main thing I was worried about was, was it wasn't gonna stain the concrete. So if you're a fire a fireman watching this video, can you explain this to me? I mean, is this supposed to be a fire management? This whole area was coming in quite beautifully and uh, they've just plowed it all down. I mean, there's no, they're not getting ready for a construction project. This is state land. Uh, so I don't know what the point of doing all of this. I mean, maybe some, uh, if you're a wildlife specialist, uh, maybe they figure they just need some underbrush uh, of some sort, maybe for small animals, like, uh, I don't know. Uh, you explain this to me. I'm 
I'll cut this clip off here in just a second, but I wanted to show you this devastation. Because I was cutting in a trail. I was going to show you my community service project. I was cutting in a trail up this way. And uh, and it was going to be quite beautiful. That's kind of my what I do for community service. But they've plowed it. Look what they did. They completely just tore it up. And, and if you look out, well, let's look over here. What's the point of this? I don't get it. But anyway, the trail I was cutting was right back here, kind of along that tree line, coming in this way, and it was going to reconnect with the main trail. Of course, all that work was for naught, huh? Who would have known that they were going to do something like this? Please leave a comment if you understand what the point of this is. Before I get my ugly mug in the uh, frame here, I want to show you why I come out here. Isn't that just amazing? Yeah, that's beautiful. So let's get on to the, uh, the next topic of this video. Because i got to make a correction about yesterday. Yes, I have to watch my videos. I know it's a torture for you as it is for me. And uh, i got to make some corrections on yesterday's video. Uh, and then, of course, expand on that. Um, I, when I said 100 vendors, I meant 100 countries were there to look at the vendors. The vendors, as far as I can tell, were India, uh, Russia, China, and Iran. Those are the only four vendors that were there showing off their military hardware. And the, uh, there, I think there was about 100 countries that had shown up to look at all of the, um, well, it's still going on. I mean, I think the, the expos can, might be going all week. Uh, but I, what is the significance? Why did I show you that video? Why did I think it was important? Well, Ukraine has <laughs> been a disaster. I mean, it, it's so many ways for the West and the United States. I mean, I, the repercussions of, of the Biden administration, the warmongering Democrats, sending us sending uh, our Ukrainians to die in a proxy war against a superpower have no bounds I mean it just continues in in so many ways and so the the next way was the whole world got to see Russia destroy all the NATO equipment and uh, by the way uh, Russia is putting together a museum of NATO equipment <laughs> in Moscow I think it's in Moscow uh, and they're gonna they're gonna they're going to showcase all of the, um, the Leopard tanks, uh, the Bradley fighting vehicles, uh, the Javelins, uh, you know, all the NATO hardware that they've captured uh, just to make fun of it. What is the significance of all this? Are you kind of getting where I'm going with all of this? The whole world now wants to buy Russian military equipment. What is the number one industry in the United States? The military industrial complex what's going to become a really important industry i don't think it's going to eclipse the commodities industry their oil and gas industry in russia but what's going to become a big industry there their military industrial complex now if you've been following the ukraine war and you've been watching what's going on and you're um, let's say uh venezuela for example well no, let's not take venezuela let's talk about let's say brazil Okay, because I think my Brazil probably has bought some, some U.S. military hardware at some point in the past. Or Colombia, let's just say Colombia, because uh, I know they have. And you've watched uh, what took place in Ukraine. He might be thinking, hmm, maybe I better buy some of that Russian military equipment. <laughs> you know, I mean, and in Russia, I'm sure they're developing contracts right now with nations all around the world to sell that equipment. And, and by the way, that's, it gets much military, selling military hardware is not just selling military hardware. You know, you got to remember that there's maintenance for that. So there's maintenance contracts with the more complex stuff that's going to go along with that. There's going to be training programs. Uh, there's going to be ammunition that's got to be supplied. Uh, so that these countries are going to buy. So it's, it's like a never ending snowball rolling down a hill. And uh, so Russia stands to make huge profits <laughs> and, and, and and what's that going to do to the United States military industrial complex well the only thing they can do is keep fighting wars so uh, that's about it and, and fleecing the US taxpayers 
Well, that can only go so far. We, I think the U.S. taxpayers are just about fleeced out at this point. They don't, they don't even understand. By the way, I, this was a challenge I was going to put at the beginning of the video. I want you to go out today or tomorrow. Tomorrow, let's say tomorrow. You're probably watching this video after you've done with work today. And I want you to ask just uh, somebody at work, you know, or, or a friend or a relative or whoever, say, hey, yeah. Uh, do you know where Ukraine is? You know, just maybe pretend you're stupid, because if you're watching this video, I think you know where Ukraine is. And, and they might look at you and go, you know what, I really don't. Isn't it kind of near uh, thus and such, you know? And you say, well, yeah, it could be, yeah. See how stupid people are. They don't even, a lot of people in the United States don't even know there is a war <laughs> going on in Ukraine. Or how important this is all going to be. Oh, my God. All right, so that's it for this clip. I just wanted to talk about why I showed you the military expo, why it means so much. And then, of course, Russia making fun of NATO by putting together a museum to display all the NATO hardware that they've captured. I imagine they're going to show eventually a lot of the blown up hardware and probably, uh, you know, have it's going to be like a Smithsonian Museum because this is this war is the biggest war since World War II. Uh, and so there's going to be a, I'm going to predict this now, there will be one huge uh, museum complex that will, assuming the world survives and we don't go to global thermal nuclear war, I hate to throw that out there, uh, but uh, there will be a huge uh, museum eventually, of course they've gotten started on it now, that will, you know, you go from exhibit to exhibit, talk about battle after battle, uh, they'll probably showcase equipment, uh, NATO equipment all along the way, uh, talking about you know how things developed the history uh, behind the war because about Russia is big on their history I if you ask people here I, what was it some senator <laughs> he said he said we fought the Soviet Union during World War II oh my god I mean I, I, the, the, actually the reporters the dumb stupid reporters actually had to correct the guy I uh, was it tip Tibley or something like that and they said no we, the Soviet Union was our ally during World War II we fought the Nazi Germany Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is somebody that's elected, uh, you know, in the U.S. Congress. All right, let's, I'll get to the next topic here in a minute. All right, so from this point on in the video, I won't show you me. It's, a, it's actually a very cool day. I mean, we're only talking, well, 92 to 95 degrees. Uh, the humidity, I don't know, it's, it's pretty high. We're supposed to, well, we were supposed to get rain later in the day. But I'll check the forecast. It's amazing how quick the forecast changes here in Florida. It was 80% chance of rain yesterday. Now it's uh, 17 to 20%, 25% to today. So that's why I had to get out for a hike. And uh, I don't know if the phone will overheat at 92 or 95 degrees. I don't think it will. I, I think we're going to be all right. But let's get to the, the next two topics. Well, the first one is uh, sweat, sweat, sweat. Do you love to sweat? I love to sweat, man. I just think about all those toxins that are coming out of my system and just pouring out of those pores, cleaning them out. And I'm going to tell you what, that shower when I get home, it's just a nice cold shower and you just get in there and just... Ah, oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. And it's good for you, man. You got to get out in it. And, uh, and you'd be surprised how used to the heat you can get. Now, I wouldn't recommend what I do hiking in 115 <laughs> heat index. <laughs> I only do that when I get desperate, you know. I mean, I, I wait for a good day like today, and uh, boy, it just popped up here today. So I had to take advantage of it. But let's get to a serious topic, uh, bricks. So here's my next challenge for you. When you're out, you know, and you've tried that Ukraine question that I gave you before, why don't you ask, uh, hey, Billy Bob, Billy Bob, you ever heard of this, uh, this bricks thing? Yeah, probably look at what what's bricks? Oh, uh, well, they're trying to replace the dollar or something like that. Oh, well, yeah, I guess I, that seemed like it might be important. I guess I don't know, don't really care. Okay, yeah, I, mean, I just wanted to see see what you thought of that. Anyway, let me let's talk about bricks because uh, this is uh, and, and and another thing is you got to keep educating yourself. Uh, Every time I watch an, another video or another dialogue or an exchange on YouTube or, or a Rumble, it's where I go for a lot of my videos now, I learn a little bit more. And there was a discussion here recently, and I hadn't really thought about it. Because the question came up, how did Russia survive the sanctions 
so uh, perfectly. And uh, and so the guy, you know, of course, bricks ties into that. And uh, bricks, you know, I guess I didn't really quite understand. It has existed for many years. It just never has been implemented fully, well, you know, with a, an exchange. It's going to be just basically a, a means of exchange between countries that avoids the dollar in the end, which we're kind of already there when you think about it. And so what he was pointing out, he says, well, what Russia did, of course, and China facilitated it, was they started, you know, they had prepared everything. They'd been doing this for years since 2014 after the invasion or the the um, the overthrow of the government uh, by the United States and Ukraine. The uh, Russia and China have been working feverishly to get away from the dollar as far as a means of exchange. And they've brought a lot of countries into the mix. Maybe not Western European, but or the, certainly not the United States, of course. But I mean, so they had already established this network uh, of exchanging in their own currencies. Uh, India, of course, in, included in that, uh, and Brazil. All right, and so that whole network already exists. So you can kind of say that BRICS is already here. <laughs> I never really thought about that. It's just it just hasn't been. I uh, set up perfectly. I mean, there's a, still a lot more work to go on the whole system, but m most of, a lot of the world now is trading outside the dollar. And I was like, damn, I hadn't, you know, I, you know, I knew what was going on. You just didn't put it all together that that's bricks. And so here we got in what one or one week. I think I want, I keep thinking it's August 22nd, but then somebody will say it's in September. I don't know. I will see what, but I think it's next next week. You know, a lot of the countries are going to get together, especially the BRICS countries. I don't know if there's going to be other countries there, because uh, you know I think there's like 44 now that want to attend the conference, and they're going to start hammering out even more. Now you remember that everything's pretty much hammered out. When I say pretty much, I mean a lot of the infrastructure has already been hammered out to begin with, but now they want to continue to hammer out the BRICS which is gonna cut the United States off more and more. You know, Saudi Arabia, for example, they're trading outside of the dollar now. So you can kind of see where all this is heading. I mean, the whole world is turning their back on the United States. Like our military industrial complex <laughs> is not gonna be selling weapons around the world no more. You know, our one industry, the one industry we have left, uh, the the dollar the, the 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 weapon that we've used and see that's that's the reason why this thing accelerated so fast is you know, if you look back we've been using the dollar as a weapon around the world for well the last 20 years and uh, and so when it first started I imagine you know people were their eyebrows went up and they said wow maybe we need to think about getting away from that dollar but how can you do it and so countries for 20 years now, where there's a will, there's a way. You ever heard that phrase? Where there's a will, there's a way. So for 20 years, the the rest of the world has been working towards getting away from the dollar. And now, now with the with the war in Ukraine and China flexing its financial muscle, uh, showing the United States they are now the number one industrial power in the world, thanks to the United States, thanks to the, the greed of the uh, U.S. corporations. Uh, and so imagine if you're a globalist lunatic, you're shaking in your shoes, so your world is turning upside down. My question is going to be, do you destroy the world just out of spite, just to say, you know what, a world without... United States empire hegemony is not a world that should exist. And it sure does seem like we are heading that way. So here's the beehives. We got that on the video, but it was shaking all around, I noticed. Let's get over here close. Let's see if I can get stung. Oh, there, yeah, well, there's one buzzing me right now. Yeah, I hear him. I better, I better back off. <laughs> I don't want to get stung. I was just being facetious. I thought I could get a lot closer, but one of them was chasing me away. I guess they... They know that when you get off the trail. All right, so that's kind of the next topic. Don't you think it's interesting? BRICS is getting finalized. Scary, scary time for the United States. If you ever want to donate to a charity, you could donate to my foundation. Because uh, one of the when I die, I'll, every, my entire estate 
goes to my foundation, which goes to the uh, uh, the recreation department uh, for development. And uh, I got to get the uh, well, somebody from the uh, recreation department here in Central Florida out to show them this because my dream is I want to put picnic tables. I want picnic tables put along in here in memory of my name. And, uh, and then, of course, we have some horse. This is a horse trail. I want some horse uh, ties so that people can tie off their horses. Uh, and also, I want a shelter uh, built over top of the picnic table so that, uh, you know, in a thunderstorm, this would be a great place so that you can hold up uh, and stop along the way. Trail goes on down this way, and there's a, there's a creek down here. And what I want to do is build a bridge over top of that creek so that uh, you can... Uh, uh, the horses, well, the horses can hike right through the creek, but for hikers, just be a hiking bridge so that the hikers can keep going on that trail. I have never gone past the creek, so I really don't know how far it goes. Uh, that would be a discussion that I would have with the, uh, and then, of course, I would want a sitting bench right here where you can just sit and look out over this little uh, ravine. So kind of a little mini park. Uh, my estate should cover this quite, uh, quite easily. All right, let's keep on going. All right, so the next topic I wanted to discuss always goes back to Ukraine. And, uh, you know, I always you watch all these videos and everybody overanalyzes everything. By the way, I will stick by my analysis that the whole Prigozhin, uh, whatever you want to call it, a, a mutiny, um, was a PSYOP. And that's what I told you in many videos back. I still stand by that analysis. I think I was correct, and I think I've been proven correct. Still people out there saying that I'm not. Just look at what's happening in Africa. We're not going to talk about Africa today. But I wanted to get back to Ukraine and Russia. So what is, what's going on with Ukraine? Well, the thing that I, I find weird about the West is all you got to do, the Russians, they say what they mean, and they mean what they say. Okay, what's the purpose of the special military operation? It was to denazify and demilitarize Ukraine. That's it. It was never, I'm going to conquer Ukraine. It was never, I'm going to invade Europe. It was never uh, that we're going to uh, obliterate Poland. It was not about any of that. Take the Russians at their word. Their word was, we're going to denazify and demilitarize Ukraine. So. With that in mind, do you think Russia is accomplishing their task? I certainly do. I think it's going extremely well for them, not in terms of people dying on their side, although I think that their death rates are much less. Uh, that's not an acceptable loss for anybody, but it's one that they felt they have to do to preserve the existence of the Russian uh, uh, Federation, the Russian people. A world without Russia is not a world worth living in. That's what, if you talk to any Russian, that's how they feel. They're going to fight to the last Ukrainian. So, or the last Russian, the way you want to look at it. So, uh, so what, what happened was you had mission creep. And uh, they haven't really redefined the special military operation. It's still the same. But as long as Ukraine continues to bash up against those Russian defenses, sacrificing themselves, sacrificing their equipment, not their equipment, NATO's equipment, special operations going well. What's the point of doing anything else? I mean, do you really want to come across uh, and go through minefields like the Ukrainians are and, and kill them, a lot of your troops? No, let's just keep letting the Ukrainians bash up against the, uh, the defenses and destroy. But see, the, the mission changed. It was about denazifying and demilitarizing Ukraine. Now the mission has become demilitarize NATO because that's because NATO decided they were going to go in whole hog on the war but it's still one and the same it's, it's basically the same so you know that's why Russia has hundreds of thousands of troops held in reserve just in case Poland wants to be the fourth army to come across and uh, and be the next uh, army for them to destroy uh, and a lot more NATO equipment so that's kind of where we are and I just wanted to say that it, from, from my viewpoint, Russia is accomplishing their task uh, perfectly. I wouldn't change, if I were Putin, I wouldn't change a thing. Just, just keep letting the Ukrainians bash against your defenses as long as they will do it. Keep destroying military equipment. Keep letting NATO expend all its hardware. 
Uh, hopefully Russia, I mean Poland, if I was Putin, I'd be hoping that Poland might enter the battle because then you can destroy even more of NATO. And uh, that's where we are. So that's my analysis of the whole Ukraine war in a nutshell. Always great to see you check out the deer. Check them out. Let's see how close we can get before they take off. They're looking at me. They're looking at me. Yeah, I forgot to say the other day. So I must have seen 16 deer in here. There are so many deer, it's been a hunter's paradise. Look at them, beautiful animals, aren't they? If they take off, watch how fast these creatures can move when they take off. Yeah, see, they're looking at me. They're saying to see if the pizza is a threat. What kind of threat? He's coming towards us. Now, if this was a different park, I could get right up next to him. But I do believe, well, there's hunting outside of these wires. So they're used to being hunted. Here we go, here we go. I want you to see them take off. Watch how fast they move. Look at that, isn't that awesome? Look at that, look at that. Oh, that's Poor little guy, I, <laughs> I almost stepped on him. Usually the turtles here are bigger. Let's get, a, get the phone down. Let's see if we can get him from the front. Can you hit it? Yeah. I hate bothering them, but I just thought I'd show you. I see turtles on this trail all the time. Self-reliance. Self-reliance yields freedom, liberty, and self-worth. So dependence on the government yields disdain for oneself. Drug addiction. What it is to be a slave. And in the end, suicidal tendencies. I hear people calling in, talking about how we got to help Maui. How we got to help Maui. Well, yeah, obviously, I agree. But then I think when they say we, they mean the federal government. Federal government doesn't give a flying flip about Maui. <laughs> Are you kidding me? They're sending another, what, $25 billion to Ukraine. And I don't think Maui's getting hard to anything. Biden's on vacation while Maui burns, you know? I mean, do you think they really care about the American people or Maui? Wake up, people. Wake up. The only thing they care about is BlackRock wants to swoop in now and buy up all of that real estate from because that was a lot of uh, locals that got burnt out. And they're going to offer those locals deals. Uh, they can rebuild or they can sell out the BlackRock. So expect that's where your federal government is. They're certainly going to help BlackRock buy up all that property. There you go. Let's help out Maui, man. Let's help out Maui. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down. Sooner or later, God's going to cut you down.